Man, I love a good debut, and we have one today. Making his ESPN analyst debut is 15-year NBA veteran J.J. Redick. Welcome. Thank you. This is awesome. What a highlight montage, by the way. I mean, I, right. there was a lot in there. Game winners, three-pointers, a nice reverse layup package. I loved all we, that. We tried to I give you it. a well-rounded look despite RJ trying to take some things out. So I was reading an article earlier today where you said you had some performance nerves leading up to today. So before we jump in, bigger nerves waiting to do this hit or some of those game winners that we saw? Uh, <laughs> performance anxiety is always a good thing, Malika. And hey, I would definitely I say agree. game winners. Game winners for sure. All right, well, then this is going to be some light work. Let's look at one of your former teammates who is climbing the all-time assist ladder. That is the point guard, Chris Paul. So, Chris Paul and the Suns hosting the Pelicans. He entered Tuesday needing eight assists to be third in NBA history. So, here's the first to JaVale McGee. Second, kicks it to Devin Booker. Dribble pull up, kicks it over to Jay Crowder, nails the three. Crowder in the corner, pump fake for the dunk. This curling pass to Mikhail Bridges. A nice little pick and roll with Frank Kaminsky. And then he drops it to Book for three. So with that, Paul ties Steve Nash for third most all time. So second quarter, 139 left, Paul. Finds Jay Crowder in the corner. Nails the three. And with that assist, Chris Paul stands alone for the third most on NBA all-time assists. So then we head to the fourth quarter. Sun's down two. Paul, he finds Bridges over here. Three to take the lead. Suns come back from trailing by as many as 20 to take the fourth quarter lead. So the Suns up, same score. Paul finds Kaminsky and one with the layup. Paul finished with a season high 18 assists and the Suns win 112 to 100. Man, it means a lot, man. I'm, I'm grateful and I thank God for this opportunity. I say it all the time, not only to uh, be on a team and still be in the league, but to be playing. You know, you don't take that for granted. And, um, you know, I looked at that list when I first came into the league and I seen that John Stockton. I was like, I'm going to get it. That ship sailed. <laughs> that ship sailed to be third, man, and and still be playing. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for it and, and still, still got a ways to go. So, JJ, you and Chris spent four years together with the Clippers. What did you notice about him that was different than other point guards that you played with? Well, first of all, he knew where I was on the court at all times, but not just me. He knew where everybody was on the court. Uh, and we could talk about his vision, his mid-range, his defensive hands, all the stuff. The best description I've ever heard of Chris is that he squeezes the juice out of every possession. What makes Chris great is his competitive stamina, his sustained competitive spirit, game to game, night to night, season to season. And over the course of his career, he's squeezed all of the juice out of his career. If you, if you said at the beginning of his career, at his size, to be able to play at this level at age 36, it's remarkable what he's doing. He's also squeezed out an incredible amount of assist juice because right now he is 10,346 career assists. Do you know how many of those were to you? And, and where does that rank uh, with you and the, your list of teammates that he's assisted? I actually think I might be top one ah, or maybe top, top two of most assi <laughs> assisted teammates. I, I got to be up there. Okay, You're number, number three. three. All right, number close, three. That's I like not top bad. one, though. That's, that's something I'm yeah. going to use now. Top number one. Number three is great. <laughs> number three is great. Uh, you know, what, what, what has made him such a good uh, assist uh, creator, shot creator, is just his ability to read the game. Uh, you know, even last night in, um, in the New Orleans game, they started out in blitz coverage. Uh, he read that right away. He was getting off the ball early. He found JaVel McGee multiple times, uh, rolling to the rim. They tried to mix it up a little bit in the second half. They went to some drop coverage. He hit the pocket pass. Uh, all this stuff, me coming off catch and shoot stuff. It's just amazing to watch these clips and, and see him do this uh, for 16 years, 17 years now. I mean, look at that vision. What was it, what was it that stood out to you most from his 18 assists last night? The ability to just get off the ball. I, I think, you know, a lot of times with high assist numbers, 
you dominate the ball. And Chris is so willing to get off the ball. And once he recognized those blitzes, he made the early pass. This to me is vintage Chris, surveying the field, surveying the court, finding the trailer for three in transition. Uh, when he gets out and pushes it in transition, I think that's when he's at his best. Mm. So now he's third on the list, trailing Don Stockton. Well, where do you see him rising to here? Like Chris said, he's not catching John Stockton. That ship has sailed. Uh, he's missed too many games in his career. I do think he'll catch Jason Kidd. If he essentially has his career average in assists uh, for the next three plus seasons, he'll have a ch even with a handful of missed games, he'll have a chance to, to catch Jay Kidd. The other thing is he'll move into the top three probably in career steals, which Stockton uh, is at the top of that list as well. John Stockton, by the way, the longevity there, the numbers, number one in steals, number one in, in assists. Uh, give that guy his flowers. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.